I just finished a fourth session of making biochar from woody tops from old dead pines and mulberries and miscellaneous prunings from the wood this winter in this new experimental kiln that I want to talk about in this video. I'll talk about the details of the kiln in a moment, but just to touch on it, the reason why I would want to make biochar in the first place is this is a way to consume woody debris that would otherwise be appropriate for, let's say, a chipper or sometimes an open burn pile. And if you burn the material at a certain rate, a certain speed, a certain way, you are left with pure charcoal if you quench it at the end. And that is incredibly valuable for our gardens, for our composting systems and the like. And so this kiln, which was crafted by a new friend of mine named Andy, he's down in the Binghamton area of New York. I'm going to put his contact info in the description, uh, his email and his phone number. So we chatted via email and he came up with this design based on some input that I shared with him for what is basically a cone pit biochar kiln that is really robust. I mean, like really thick steel. Uh, we designed it with the lip along the top here, which makes a place where you can hook your fingers in. Two people can carry this very easily. On uh, one person, myself, I was able to slide this on a sled on the snow and it moved it just fine. I've done experiments in the past with 55 gallon metal drums and a whole bunch of other things. I'll link to my biochar playlist somewhere here and you can check out those other experiments. And I still really like them for their low cost and ease of access and the like. Um, but the metal's a little bit flimsy and something about the geometry of this, the angle that he came up with, um, it really works nicely to direct the heat back towards the center. So from all sides, it aims towards the center. And with these lips on the top, it sends the smoke back in for a second round of potential combustion and really clarifies the burn quite a bit. I've learned over time that the best biochar that I can make involves a huge amount of agitation while it's being made. So a lot of times uh, while I'm burning, I'll use a metal T-post or hay fork uh, to be poking and breaking up the material, agitating and stirring. And having a really thick walled metal seems pretty critical because I've almost blown out some of the 55 gallon drums with that sort of agitation in the past. And I think there's some benefit in the fact that he designed it with just a little bit of an air gap underneath. Well, it decouples it from the ground so you don't have to worry about it overheating the soil that it's on or setting things on fire. In fact, there's still some snow underneath this last burn. It uh, keeps all the heat in the container. Now, there are ways we could have optimized this, maybe a ring of metal all the way around as a heat shield or a windshield. Um, all sorts of little tweaks in the future, but the basic design is pretty neat. It'd be cool to see how this can evolve. I'll be sharing notes with Andy after these trials on different design tweaks that I think could make it a little bit more stable, like little feet on the bottom there in case you're in soft mud um, or some other little tweaks. And then we're going to be looking at designing potentially some upgrades on this in the future, so stay tuned. But in the meantime, if you're roughly in the Binghamton, New York area, southern New York, I know he's open to the idea of making this sort of structure, some sort of modified custom structure along this line, and he's got a whole bunch of really beautiful um, metal outdoor fire pit designs already in play. So check him out and let him know we said hello, and I'll keep scooping biochar for the chicken yard and otherwise. Thanks for watching.